So we are celebrating Dr. King this week. And um, <laughs> Dr. King was definitely a man of vision. It only goes right. We're talking about 2020. He had to be able to see the unseen. And his whole goal was that a man shall be judged by the content of his character and not the color of his skin. And so we can learn a lot. We need to pull up all Dr. King's quotes in this, in this time because I think we've forgotten. One of my favorites is this, I've decided to stick with love because hate is too great a burden to bear. Hate will eat you up from the inside and it's not worth hating. Whatever happened before, I'm willing to let go. Let's move forward. Amen. Let's move forward, but understand that we have to love one another. And it's not even just about the color of your skin. It's classism, there's sexism, there's all these isms. But he was a man of vision and he is definitely worthy to be celebrated. And not only that, but our own Malik, uh, Chris Murray, um, is receiving the MLK Day Award at Capital University on tomorrow. And so it's for the young man who experiences Dr. King-like quality. I would like to believe I had some input on that. So I told, I told his mama, get our award and bring it back. Y'all do know them awards ain't for y'all, right? I tell my kid all the time, every award he gets, just bring it on home, because this ain't about you. This is about me. He's a scholar athlete, so the first year when he was younger, where are my scholar athletes at? Give my kids a hand, man, look. They're not only on the field, they got 3.3.5, 4.1s, 4.3s, you know. We're doing big things, but it ain't about you. I found out there was a scholar athlete award in sixth grade, and sixth grade, he didn't get it. And I told him, I said, I don't ever want to sit at another award ceremony and I don't get a scholar athlete award. You understand? I've been getting scholar athletes award ever since. Okay. Well, last year I found out when he got to high school, there was a president's award. I said, I want that. <laughs> so it was great when you was hitting that 3.5, 3.7, but I need you to bump it up a little bit. I need a 4.1 so I can get me a president. I'm gonna have a whole wall of all these awards because it's not about you. One of my godchildren, I have four godchildren graduate from high school this year. And one of them decided they wasn't going to prom. Their mother told me, I said, do she understand this ain't about her? <laughs> this is our celebration. This is the celebration we get for all the prayers and all the money we, I don't care if you don't want to go, you better put a dress on. <laughs> We're going to celebrate everything there is to celebrate because it's not about you. I'm tripping. Okay. But we want to give uh, Malik Murray a hand for exhibiting Dr. King-like qualities. So, uh, we're, we are in this series, this is 2020, and we've been talking about the whole thing, like I said, I started doing the worship is, it's 2020 and it is the year of perfect vision and alignment. See, a lot of people got the vision part right, but we don't have the alignment part. You can't see if you're not aligned. No matter how perfect your vision is, if you're not aligned and on target, you will never see clearly. You will always see things from an angle, and the only angle we want to see is through the angle of Jesus Christ. And so we gave a prophetic word at the beginning of the year. We've been talking about fixing your eyes, and then we did the verse, which is 2 Corinthians 4.18, how the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And we're learning to see the unseen. That means just because a situation presents itself doesn't mean it is what it seems to be. I gotta slow down, don't I? I'm sorry. Jenny's translating today and she's she looking at me like you're going too fast. Um, but it's not about the scene. Everything you see is gonna pass. Unfortunately, the person next to you is gonna pass. Everything you see. But it's the things that are not seen that are eternal. And so the word of the Lord came to us on that first Sunday of the year, and I want to pick up a little part. This is where I'm going today. He said, now is the time to turn away from yourselves, living your life depending on yourself, to merit, earn, accomplish, 
fight for and accumulate wealth and success according to the world's definition. Then he goes on to say this, he said, fix your eyes on Jesus, his merit and his accomplishments on the cross for your every success. Seeing what he sees as we seek him. How many people want to be successful? Let me see. It's not normal if you don't. I was having a conversation with Joshua, and Joshua's going to the ninth grade. Can you believe that? Wow. Pray for me. So we're getting ready for his high school and, and his schedules and all this other thing, and we believe in putting our kids on the right track. So we started talking to him about possible career goals and what he likes to do. Joshua's great with kids. And so we're trying to see, you know, if we go to education, what are we going to do? We know it's going to have something to do with kids. He said, Mom, I want to help people. I said, you want to be a pastor? He said, no, not like that. <laughs> but I think I asked too many questions. He said, Mom, I just want to be successful. And then I, I started to think about that. And when we think about the definition of success, and the Webster's Dictionary says success is achieving the goal that one has set for himself. It is achieving what you have been desiring. I would even say in my natural state before I did my study was that success is achieving physical, mental, emotional, social, financial, spiritual well-being while maximizing your potential. I thought that was a good definition. And then God said, nope. He said, that's according to the world's definition of success. We have to look at success God's way. And in this year of alignment in 2020, we have to begin to stand and look at this thing the way he looks at this thing, and it's completely different than what we think. We think success is great jobs and lots of money and all of this other stuff, but there are people who are rich, there are people who have great jobs, and they are still unsuccessful. Why is that? Because true success is the journey that leads to the completion and the fulfillment of the original intent of God's purpose for your life. If you are not in purpose, you are not successful. Hallelujah. It's not just about, because if you are going to determine your success, you've already based it on a failing system. Because you have no clue of what God has called you to do unless you seek him for his purpose. We seek him for what career, we seek him to how to make money, how to secure the bag, as the kids say. Y'all don't know nothing about that? I gotta throw something in for my teenagers every now and then. But are we seeking him to find out what the purpose is? Because when I'm in purpose, it does not matter what my financial status is. Amen. That's Mr. Treasurer. Y'all got quiet. Let's talk about this. I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. We're going to go home. We're going to talk about the life of Joseph. You may have heard of Joseph. He was the one that had the dreams. And then his father gave him a coat of many colors. Now you got all these sons and you buy one of them a coat. You know that was going to start some problems. And it wasn't just any coat. It was an elaborate coat. You got 10, 11 kids and you buy one of them a coat. So it already started some friction there, sibling rivalry as we would call it. But not only that, he started going over telling people what he was dreaming. Mm -hmm. And he started telling his brothers, yeah, I had a dream. I had a lot of cattle. You had a little. Your cattle bowed to mine. Could you imagine your little brother or your little sister coming in telling you, you're going to serve me? Y'all yeah, didn't see the family dynamic there. It was all bad. And so if you read the story in Genesis, it says that he received the coat, he had the dreams, his brothers decided to kill him. Well, the oldest brother couldn't kill him, so they threw him in the ditch, he talked him not out of the ditch, he actually threw him in the ditch because he was gonna come back and get him. But by the time he threw him in the ditch, somebody had picked him up and he was sold into slavery. He went into slavery, then Potiphar seen him, Potiphar bought him in a house, made him ruler, ruler of all. Then his wife thought he was cute. It was all bad. Y'all don't need, look, Malik's eyes got this big, like, what? 
She tried to seduce him, he ran out the house naked because that was not his wife. And so she lied on him and had him throw him in jail. He was in jail. Then he gets to interpret the baker's dream and the butcher's dream. He said, you gonna die, you gonna live. You know, Joseph was, was you know, he was a tough one. So then he ended up being in a king's house. Pharaoh made him king over all. And then he saw his brothers had to come back. There was years of famine. And he was the only one that was in charge of the food. So the same ones that tried to kill him had to come back. Oh, Lord. The same ones that abused him and threw him away had to come back because they needed his help. And his family was reunited. Wouldn't it be great if God give us our plan from the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about this plan because it's already happened. Joseph didn't know what was happening. Just like we don't know what was happening. But sometimes I ask God, like, God, can't you just give me the whole thing so I know when rough times come, I know there's better days coming. <laughs> All that I went through, I knew that eventually it was going to pay off. Like, could I get like a, 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 a blueprint to this thing? But if he gave you the bl blueprint, would you trust it? He wants relationship with you above anything. And he, you just have to trust him. And most part of the struggles that we go through is because we don't trust him. Because even when bad comes, when terrible things happen, if we truly trusted him, we wouldn't trip. It's just a part of the process. But this is the part that I want to go to. And I'm almost done. We see the plan, we know how it ended, it was great. Joseph was just walking his destiny. He had no clue where this was gonna turn out. This is the part. In 39, verses one through three, listen what's happening. They, they, they actually threw him into slavery. He was naked on the, the auction floor. No clothes bound on the auction floor being ready to be sold into slavery. The scripture says this, Potiphar's servant comes and said, we want him. It picks up here and says, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar and an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. Did I tell you he was naked? Did I tell you he didn't have a dime, he didn't have nowhere to go, his inheritance was gone, he was by himself, naked, being sold into slavery, and the Lord declared him successful. Why was he successful? Because the Lord was with him. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Do you know when the Lord is with you, other people see it whether they saved or not? Most of the favor you experience on your job and everything else is because they see that the Lord is with you. See, we have to understand this, that perfect vision and alignment, success is a result of who you have, not what you have. He was able in every perishing predicament he found himself to be elevated. He was even elevated in jail. How you get elevated in jail? <laughs> he got promoted. Why? Because people could see that the Lord was with him. Is the Lord with you? Amen. Or are you just chasing success? <laughs> It's the presence of God in your life that makes you a success. There are so many, if I could interview superstars, and one of you got to interview them, look at their Instagram, look at their social media. They live terrible lives, but they're famous. 
all of these great people, now all their sins are starting to find them out. They're going to jail. They're doing all this crazy stuff. I, I, I had the mistake of watching Surviving R. Kelly. And you may not know what that is, but let me tell you. It was somebody who was sick that was able to use their money to further their sickness. That's not success. On the other hand, you may say he was one of the greatest songwriters and, and he could do a show and people loved him. And even knowing what he's done, there's still people that refuse to admit that he was wrong. They're blaming victims for being victimized. But that's success. Some of our very, gr the greatest pop artists or the greatest TV stars and superstars, their marriages last about 15 minutes. Is that success? What are you after? I'd rather for the Lord to be with me because favor can get you places money can't get you to. When the Lord is with you, you have a confidence that if God is before me, who dare stand against me? I'm not real concerned about what others may say because it's obvious that I have the fruit that the Lord is with me. Is he with you? Or are you obtaining your own success? I tell my young people all the time, we got a lot of athletes in here that are doing great things. Um, Joy Banks is down at the convention center right now playing in a JBO tournament and, and she texts me about praying for her and all this other stuff. You all are going to be great, but use your platform for him. We don't need another knucklehead athlete. We need some people that's going to make a difference for Jesus in this world. And I don't mean go around and slap people with the Bible and, and slap people in the head and condemn them. Let the light shine through you while you crossing people up. It's the glory of God. You can burn them in coverage on the football field and still say hallelujah in the end zone. Let the light shine. Yes. What are you doing with your platform? Are you successful? Achieving success through the world's definition will leave you exhausted, broken, and empty. Because in this, in, in the world's definition of success, it's never enough. Lust is never fulfilled. So you get to, okay, if I could just get this house, and you get that house, and you sit there for 15 minutes, and then it's not enough. If I could just get this wife, hallelujah. And you're in this relationship, and relationship problems start, so now you're looking for another because it's not enough. It is never fulfilled. Chasing the world's definition of success will leave you broken. I wanted to put on that slide, busted and disgusted. But that probably wouldn't have been politically correct. You're always trying to fill a void. Nothing is ever enough. Lust is, lust is never satisfied. It gives forth to sin. Sin always takes you places you don't want to go and make you stay longer than you intended to. Usually the emptiness comes because that desire for success or that void you try to fill can only be filled by him. There are people who have millions of dollars. There are people who just have had the greatest job. If you're looking at their life on Instagram, it's perfect. But they're empty. They're broken. How do I know I tried it this way? 
I was after an approval that I could never seem to get from everybody. You can't please everybody all the time. I don't care what you do and you will kill yourself trying to do it. I have stopped trying to gain the approval of men a long time ago. Listen, I love y'all, but I can care less if you are pleased. If he is pleased, that is all that matters. There's a reason he said in the Bible, don't look at their faces. I'm going to stand and I'm going to preach the flat foot truth whether you like it or not. And I'm going to love you and smile afterwards. Because my success is found in him. I'm successful. No, I don't have a million dollars in the bank. No, my face ain't all over Instagram and no, I can't shop like I want to. I do shop a lot. But, because that's not true success. You did see, but you didn't see well. Look again. You're complaining about a life that he has given you and you're more successful now than you were when you were living it your way. But the enemy wants you to believe that you're not successful. Joseph was naked on the auction floor and God still pronounced him successful. When God is with you, good things will happen in you, around you, and through you. Be careful being around people who ain't nothing good happening. I was in this shop and one of the shop owners, she deals with a lot of different personalities and she was talking to me about possibly getting some classes or something together for mental health because nobody addresses the professionals in the, the professionals in their field, mental health. And you gotta think, people don't believe it, but cosmetologists are therapists. Okay, all right, men, just hold on. Oh, y'all know too. Barber shops, your barber is your therapist. How do I know? Because you tell him everything that is going on with you. Every situation, every whatever. And the same thing with salons. That, that girl that does your hair knows everything about you. She knows your kids. She knows you and your husband had a fight. She knows it all. So she's trying to develop a program to begin to help them get some help because then they leave depressed and suicidal and all this other stuff. But she said, one thing I find is that none of these people have anything good to say. You ask them how they do and they tell you about everything that's wrong. She said, I'm, I'm sorry to make it a habit. She said, tell me something good. When people ask me, how am I? My first response is always, oh, I'm doing great. Now there may some be some things happening, but they're not worthy. We learned last week to compare. This light affliction, it ain't worthy to be compared to the glory, to the inner work that God is working in me. So whatever I'm dealing with, he's using it to perfect what's in me. Because he's God, he can change it at any time. The fact that he doesn't means there's something I need to learn. God is with you, good things will happen in you, around you, and through you. When your eyes are fixed on him, you begin to see a reflection of you that you've never seen before. Isn't he so great that he gives you the reflection of what he's called you to be? He sees you. You see yourself broken down. He sees one who has gone through much trial and still stands and believes. <laughs> you see yourself downtrodden or not successful or whatever, and He's calling you the beloved. We have to see things through His eyes. You think your situation is dire, and He's using your situation to perfect something in you and them. Can I tell you something about marriages and then I'm done? We're having a marriage conference. They'll tell you about that. But something about marriages, usually the problem in the marriage 
is that both of you are acting like you treating God. What does that mean? If there's no intimacy, and intimacy is being withheld in a relationship, it's probably because you're withholding intimacy with him. He wants you to know how it feels. If there's a lack of communication, it's probably because you're not communicating with him. I tell people all the time, align yourself with him. Don't worry about your mate, line up with him. And when you fix your eyes with him, on him, he'll fix what's wrong with you and then he will cause everything around you to line up. Usually there's an alignment problem. Don't be looking at me all mean, I'm just preaching the word. I'm happy to marry today. You are successful when the Lord is with you. There's nothing wrong with having dreams and aspirations just as long as they line up with the plan He has for your life. The smartest prayer I've ever prayed is, God, I want what you want for me. You have the blueprints because I would be on, Lion, I would be on, on Broadway right now, probably depressed and disgusted probably high because when you can't fill a void you self-medicate and some people use drugs some people use alcohol some people use other people some people use food some people use all these kind of things to try to feel this and it's only going to be filled by one person I'm just excited that I'm standing here looking at a room of successful people. As long as you keep your eyes fixed and answer the purpose that he has. The other problem is sometimes you don't think the purpose he has is good enough for you. Because you have these big dreams about being rich and being famous and you will never be because he know that you will, go, you will be busting hell wide open. Some people don't need a lot of money. Some people don't need fame. His thoughts of us are good. He's only going to give us what's good for us. to every area of your life and you my friend will live a life of good success Lord God we lift up everybody in this room before you we thank you that you're in control we thank you that you're, you are showing us the true meaning of success care what we where we find ourselves as long as you're with us it is all right that you will develop in us according to your purpose and that we will be careful to give you all the glory the honor and the praise we ask all these things in Jesus name we pray amen come on and give the Lord some praise